Hey guys, welcome to another A Level Master Room video. Today we're carrying on with some more Feather Pure 2. We're taking a look at the very last chapter here. And one of the little topics within it is arc length. Okay, so the good news about this chapter, or this topic specifically, is we're given the formulas in the back of the formula book. So, not too much to worry about. We just need to know how to apply the formulas. So, let's take a look at this first question, which is basically with polar form. So we've got R equals e to the theta. So we're not working in polar form here. We're between the points 0 to pi. So in this case, our limits, so we're using this bottom formula here because we're in polar form. So we're using s equals, so it's the integral. So your limits, sometimes you'll see these limits defined as alpha and beta. In this case, alpha and beta are just 0 and pi. So that's what we're working between okay so that's your alpha that's your beta then it's times well it's the sorry it's the square root of r squared plus dr by d theta all squared so r squared what would that be well that's just going to be e to the theta squared so that's just going to be e to the two theta okay and if we work out dr by d theta That's just simply going to be the derivative of r with respect to theta. So that's just simply going to give us e to the theta again. Okay, so this is actually going to be quite a nice question to work out. So if I plug my r squared in, that's e to the 2 theta here. I've got e to the theta all squared because it's dr by d theta squared. That will again, that will be e to the 2 theta. And we're integrating this with respect to theta. So in this case here now, what I want to do is simplify underneath the square root the s is still equal to the integral from 0 to pi so this will be the square root so that's e to the 2e plus e to the 2e so that's two lots of uh, two lots of e to the 2 theta with respect to theta and this is easy to rewrite in index notation so that's going to be the integral from 0 to pi of 2e to the 2 theta power of a half okay with respect to theta and if we just start simplifying here well 2 theta remember your power of um, indices here 2 theta we times that by a half so that just become theta and we take the square root of 2 here remember power of a half we take the square root so what we've actually got is the integral from 0 to pi of the square root of 2 e to the theta okay with respect to theta and if you just integrate this nice and easy we just get the result here so we just get the square root of 2 e to the theta okay and then all we need to actually consider is these two limits here 0 to pi so all I've got to do now is just plug these limits in so this will be the square root of 2 times e to the pi so be the square root of 2. So what I'm essentially going to do, I'm just going to factor this square root of 2 outside. Um, so it's going to be e to the pi um, and then e to the 0. But remember we subtract this lower limit off so it's going to be minus e to the 0, so minus 1. Okay, and that would be our result, but that's the exact length um, of the curve. So six marks for that. Like you can see, mathematically um, this one wasn't too bad can get a bit more tricky where you might have to use substitution for example but overall not too bad just be careful um, which form you're working in so whether you're working in cartesian parametric or polar and then just make sure you pick the right formula using that okay so that's the first question done there let's take a look at this next one then. so this one's from um, june 2015 off the old exam papers so we've got this curve which has the equation y equals cosh x so we're working between one and um, ln five and we just want to find the exact length of this curve so we're giving the answer in terms of e. So y is cosh x. So in this case, we're working with Cartesian coordinates. So we're going to use the top formula here, this one here. Okay. So y is equal to cosh x. So in that case, I need to work out dy by dx. So if y is cosh x, um, dy by dx is just hyperbolic sine of x okay so we've got dy by dx so we just plug everything in and get our um, our answer essentially so s is equal so it's the integral 
with our limits between 1 and ln 5, that's what we're told in the question, of the square root of 1 plus dy by dx all squared. So it's 1 plus dy by dx squared, so it's just hyperbolic sine of x squared. So 1 plus sine squared of x like that. Okay, and this is with respect to x. Now here at this stage, um, hopefully you spot the little trick we've got to do. And that little trick is using our hyperbolic identities. Um, so in this case, we're going to need to use the fact that hyperbolic cos minus hyperbolic sine is equal to 1. Okay, we can use that fact now. Because we can rearrange this to be in terms of cos x. Um, so to do that, I'd add hyperbolic sine squared x to both sides. And notice we obtain this result here just without the square root. Um, plus hyperbolic sine of x like that. So in that case, simply, if you take the square root of this side, we'd take the square root of that side as well, which is the exact same result here. Okay, so in that case, cos x is equal to the square root here. Which is exactly what we've got, right? So in that case, what we're actually integrating then is cos x between 1 and 1, 5. Okay. And remember, the integral of cos x is just hyperbolic sine of x. So this is actually quite a nice question. Um, so that is sine of x. Remember, our limits don't change, just 1 and 1, 5. So now, in this case, given that we want the answer in terms of e, we need to use the exponential form of hyperbolic sine. So let's just plug our limits in first, see what we get. So that would be shine of ln 5, so just put it in brackets just so it's clear, minus shine of 1. Okay. So like I said, let's use the exponential form now of our hyperbolic sine here. Uh, so if I just clear, a lot of this at the top. We should have enough room here to finish it off. So let's have a go at it. So using the exponential form now, so shine of ln 5, so that would be e to the ln 5 minus e to the minus ln 5 divided by 2 minus, so shine of 1 now, so plug in, um, that would be minus e to the 1, so that's just minus e, minus, um, so this would be minus 1 over e here, so minus 1 over e, because so obviously don't forget that's minus e to the minus x, so x is this here, um, and then finally we divide that by 2 as well. Okay. So at this stage here, now we want to do a bit of simplifying, um, just to make it a little bit easier to basically carry on with it. Um, because don't forget, e to the ln 5 is just 5, for example. So we can simplify here. So this is 5. This minus ln 5, you can take the minus to the top using the power rule. So that's basically 5 to the minus 1, so 1 over 5. And that would be divided by 2. We also have this here, which we can't do anything with at the moment, so minus e, minus 1 over e like that, um, divided by 2. And then at this stage here, you can give your answer in a number of different ways, whichever you you know, you feel uh, most confident with. You can just simplify this here and leave it as you've got it here. So for example, you could give your answer as 12 over 5 minus e over 2. So splitting this up into two fractions here, so minus minus 1 over e divided by 2. I'd get plus e to the minus 1 divided by 2. That's one way you can do it. A way that I think looks a bit neater is to times um, both top and bottom here by 5e, because we want to get it over a common denominator. So top and bottom by 5e. And if you do that, what you'd get then in that case is 25e minus e minus 5e squared plus 5 
whole divided by 10 e. Okay, if you just simplify this numerator here, 25 e minus e, we get 24 e minus 5 e squared plus 5 divided by 10 e, and there we go, job done. So, like I said, you know, a number of different ways you can give it. That way there is nice. You can give it like this over here if you prefer. Uh, and there is a few other ways you can give it as well. So as long as you can get something equivalent, job done. And then moving on to this final question here. We've got this question, again, taken from one of the old exam papers, where we've got a curve C with the given equation. So we want to find the arc length of the curve C. I want to give the answer in the form P plus ln of Q. So let's have a go at it. So again, we're working in Cartesian, so we use the top formula here. Okay. So that's the first step, just identify where we're working in Cartesian, parametric, or polar. So in that case, we need dy by dx again. So dy by dx, so differentiate term by term here. So x squared over 8 will become x over 4. And ln of x, well simply that's just 1 over x, so minus 1 over x. Now, our formula uses dy by dx squared, so all I'm going to do is I'm just going to square this expression here. So if we do it up at the top still. So if we square this expression here, that means we're squaring x over 4 minus 1 over x. Which if you do that, expand it as double brackets, what you get then is x squared over 16 minus a half plus 1 over x squared. Okay, so that's our result there of expanding the brackets. So in that case, we can now use the formula for the arc limb. So s is the integral. So again, just use where we're working from x between, so between 2 and 3, so our limits are 2 and 3. Okay, so the limits don't have to be complicated to work out, you're always given them in that case. The square root here of 1 plus dy by dx all squared, so it's, that's this full expression here. So the only thing I need to do is add 1 to minus a half, so that'll give me positive a half. So if we just erase that, we don't need to put 1 on, like we're doing here. We can just write this expression, but instead of minus a half, it'll be positive a half. So x squared over 16 plus a half plus 1 over x squared. Okay. We're in a gram with respect to x. And now at this stage here, what we want to try and do is obtain this as um, a power of 2. Okay, so we want to try and get some results squared. Because if we can get some results squared, don't forget we're taking the square root. So if you're taking the square root of something squared, we just get the original expression. And that's good for this question because this here, this result under the square root, we can, we can obtain something like that. Because what this gives us is x over 4 plus 1 over x all squared, like so. Okay, so we're, t we're taking the square root of that full expression. But if you take the square root of something squared, you just get this expression here. Okay, so in that case, between 2 and 3 of x plus 4, sorry, x over 4 plus 1 over x with respect to x. And now this is really easy to work out, just integrate term by term. So in that case, we get x squared over 8 plus ln of x between 2 and 3. And then at this case, uh, or at this stage here, sorry, all we do is just plug our limits in and just simplify. So. Um, 3 squared over 8, so that's 9 over 8, plus ln of 3, minus, so we plug in the lower limit now, so that's 2 squared over 8, so a half. But what I'll do is I'll keep it in terms of a denominator of 8, just to simplify nice and easy. And then we've got ln of 2 here. And then to finish this question, all we do is do 9 over 8 minus 4 over 8, and we've got ln of 3. Um, minus ln of 2. So, 9 over 8 minus 4 over 8. So in that case, that gives us 5 over 8. And if you've got ln of 3 minus ln of 2, 
Remember, we're subtracting logarithms, we can combine it as a single logarithm here, as it will be plus ln of 3 over 2. Okay, and there we have it. So, that brings us to the end of this video. I hope this has helped. Um, if there's anything that's unclear, or anything you'd like to know a bit more clarity with, please just leave a comment down below. Cheers.